So what we're going to do is we're going to have Melinda tell you some of the names of these plants, okay? First, what we have here is prickly pear. Mm -hmm. The plant, you know, I have two different names. A lot is the name of the plant. The whole plant, the, uh, with the alpha ear, is called a love. Or you can just say love, you know, like you. Uh, and then uh, we also have uh, this other uh, booklet. That is usually uh, the fruit that grows on top here. So you see a lot of the fruit on this uh, a lot. A lot is the plant, and then uh, the fruit there is called hatek. Okay. It depends on where you gather a lot of the, uh, they're all different. The woods down in Peach Ridge Canyon are called hatek. Uh, and usually they're bigger, you know, they're bigger. And hawk uh, is the name of the deer because the deer eat a lot of the uh, plants down there. We call them alcate. Uh, so it depends on the what uh, animal eat the plants. But the uh, so we have two words. Hate grows on what kind of plant? Allah, Allah is uh -huh. called the pretty pear. The uh, fruit. It's called what? Hate. 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 There's different species of this plant, okay, and they have subtle differences. Some of them have a yellow flower, some of them have a pink flower or an orange flower, but they all have this green cactus pad and they all have a fruit, okay? But the wallapai names, the, the names of these plants on wallapai depend on what animal eats the fruit. Remember that she said, down in Peach Springs Canyon, there's a species that's called quok, quok hete, because quok means deer, and the deer eat that fruit, and that's one particular type of prickly pear cactus. There's another species that looks very similar, but it's just a little different, and the jackrabbit eats it. Mm -hmm. And what's that one called? She said it earlier. Ghoul hete. Say ghoul. Ghoul means rabbit. Yeah, you guys, when you're outside and you're roaming around the desert, you see these prickly pear, but you've probably noticed that some are tall and some are short. Some are really green, but some might be a little bit more purple. That's because they're different species, but they're all a type of prickly pear, right? Mm -hmm. So pay attention to the animals that eat the fruit, and you'll know the different names of the plants, right? Who remembers when the prickly pear is ripe? What time of year does the fruit ripen? Who remembers? Yeah? In the spring. Almost. In the spring is when it flowers, okay? And it takes a while. Once it flowers, the birds and the bees, they pollinate the flower, and then the flower turns into a fruit, but that doesn't happen until summertime, okay? And then late, late in the summer is when these turn dark, dark red, okay? And the name, the word for red in Wallapai is on our board down at the bottom. How do you say it, Melinda? Quat. 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 That's the color. It's quat. Okay? So these ripen in August, and what you do is you go out there in the field, you have tongs like these, okay? Because these all have spines, and they'll, they've will they got little prickles on them, and they'll get on your hands. So what you do is you take them off the plant like this, and you twist until it comes off, and then there's another plant that does the spines off. Do you remember what the plant's name is? Snake weed. Yeah. It's kind of like red brush. Okay. Melinda, what's the wall plant name for snake weed? Mm -hmm. Make sure you say it louder. Go wild. Go wild. Mm -hmm. It's on our board here. Go wild. Go wild. And so, when this plant dries out, right about summertime, you pick it out of the ground, and you've got your prickly pear, and you take it, you use it like a broom, and you just dust, dust it off, and all these spines, they fall to the ground. Now, what we've done for you today is we've already removed the spines because we don't want you to get hurt. Back in the old days, they used to harvest the plants in the spring, in the summertime, and in the fall, right? But in the wintertime, there wasn't any food that was ripe. They had prickly pears, they had banana yucca, they had agave, they had all these different foods. 
and they were ripe in the summertime, but how did they keep them stored so that they, would, they wouldn't go rancid in the wintertime? What would they do? Because they didn't have a freezer or a refrigerator. They didn't have electricity. Has anybody ever tasted jerky? Mm -hmm. What is jerky? It's a dried piece of meat. It's dry. Okay? Drying is a way to preserve food throughout the winter time. And in the old days, that's what they used to do. They'd take strips of meat and then they would put them on a rack and they'd let the sun dry them out. Okay? We're going to do the same thing with prickly pear. I want you to pay attention. Melinda's going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to just demonstrate. And there's some more vocabulary words we want you to learn here. Okay? So, let's see. cut this in half. Okay, so that's what we've done. We've cut it in half, and you can see all those seeds in the center, right? Mm -hmm. What you guys are going to do is you're going to take your fingers, and you're going to just separate the seed from the inside. Now, the inside, what's in here, it's called the meat. All fruit has a peel mm -hmm. and a meat. And we don't want to shave so much of the inside off that all the meat goes away. So that's, okay, so you don't want the meat to be lost because that's the part that you're going to eat, okay? So you have to be real careful in taking the seeds out, okay? And what we're going to use, much like they did in the old days, is we're going to dry them on a rack. But today we have what's called a food dehydrator, and it's the same concept, okay? It dries the food out. So once you've taken the seeds out, you're going to just lay it down on the rack, like that. And this rack we're going to use, we're going to put it on the, the rest of the food that the other group did, and it's going to dry everything out. And in about two days, these are going to be like little fruit leathers. You guys will get to try them the next class that we have, okay? So I want each of you to take, in a pair, one person cuts them, and one person removes the seeds, and then you guys switch, okay? okay. Now there's a word for removing the seeds, it's on the board. Melinda's going to tell us what that word is when you remove the seed. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's everybody say it. Okay. Uh -huh. When you get your seeds off, you use your hand and you just scoop them out again. Scoop them out. Scoop out the seed. Okay. They only apply when you're working with the fruit. And it only applies to seeds.
everybody take a look at what you see how that there's seeds and spines in there you see that this this is called cheesecloth they just stranded out you don't want to eat that you get caught in your throat when you drink the juice okay? that's why it's real important that we do a good job straining it okay we strained it once is that enough maybe we should strain it twice what do you think yeah just to be safe Okay, so that means, let me wipe this one out, as long as there's no spines. You guys are going to drink this with our lunch today, okay? It was more of a family thing, you know, because everybody went out there, and the, um, if you were a grandma like me, they would stay home and take care of the children, the young ones, you know, they would take care of them, and they would stay at camp. But the father, mother, and the kids, and if they're old enough, you will carry their own uh, bucket. You know, they would uh, go out and gather a lot, you know, and then you would bring them back to the camp. And the uh, base of camp, you know, different area in the uh, country. And they knew where to go. They knew where to go and what time of the year that um, the uh, plant would. Uh, would be ready, you know, ready to harvest. So they went there, they camped out a lot. And they knew what to take with them. They knew how to cook outside. I mean, they knew how to travel a long time ago. Now, okay, the animals that uh, feed on the um, prickly pear, if they are deer, they were bigger and they were longer. And you find them down in the canyon. You go down here in Peach Wind Canyon, go all the way down, and you would get a lot of the bigger prickly pear. And they come out like in the late spring or summer into uh, September, October, and even November. You know, it depends on a different area. And then uh, they're all different. You know, some are red, some are pink, some are orange, and some are purple. Purple is red. I like the candy. Vocabulary on prickly pear. Hate. I love is the name of the plant, not the prickly pear. I love. Peck is to scoop out the seeds. Yach. It's the term for seeds, iyach, and hatenyahai, prickly pear juice, gohwayo, rabbit brush or snake weed, and tat, tat is the stickers, okay, do, dry or dried, to dry, hatenyahai yog, feed muitkwe. They make prickly pear juice to drink. Matai, wind, eisiklap, Y-shaped stick. Onk, connect in the Y-shaped stick. Quilk, to pull. These are the sentences we did. Iyaja pek ye kwajwe. We scooped the seeds and placed it on the side. Hete, the duvjue. We are drying the prickly pear fruit. Hete yajue. We are gathering the prickly pear fruit.